One of the podcasts I enjoy is called Generation Y. They look into crimes and ask if the official story is what actually happened. They did an episode on Lawrence King, also known as Letitia and Larry. When this murder hit the media, it was explained as a gay hate crime. Generation Y looked at all the details and questioned whether King's killer, classmate Brandon McInerney, was provoked or acted in self-defense. Normally that sort of argument, when applied to hate crimes, makes me really mad, but the podcasters brought up some really good points. I decided to look more into this murder for myself. King was born on January 13, 1993, in Ventura, California, to a drug-addicted mother. King's father abandoned them, and his mother was unable to care for him. At the age of two, he was adopted by Gregory and Dawn King. He was diagnosed with ADHD and reactive attachment disorder at a young age. He also had learning disabilities that resulted in him having to repeat grade one. He came out as gay when he was 10 years old, and his classmates frequently bullied him for being effeminate. At age 12, King was convicted of theft and vandalism and placed on probation. At 14, he accused his adoptive father, Gregory, of physically abusing him. After this, he was placed in a group home. In middle school, King started wearing makeup, high heels, and women's clothing to school. This caused quite a stir at the school, especially in the boys' locker room, where he was known to make sexually inappropriate comments to other boys. Due to California's anti-discrimination laws, the school couldn't tell him he had to wear male clothing. Assistant Principal Sue Parsons asked teachers to talk to their classes about being open and accepting to King's self-expression. But his behavior was indeed troubling. Several students reported that he would follow them into the bathroom and sexually harass them. When a teacher told Assistant Principal Joy Epstein about this, she said there was nothing she could do. Several of the teachers and King's adoptive father Gregory argued with Epstein, who was openly lesbian, saying she was encouraging his behavior to fit her political agenda. This was when California was getting ready to vote on Proposition 8, which would decide whether the state would allow gay marriage. It was an incredibly heated political time. At the beginning of February 2008, Larry King asked people to start calling him Letitia. He focused attention onto one classmate, Brandon McInerney. King asked McInerney to be his valentine, which McInerney refused. King would call out, love you, baby, when passing McInerney in the hallway and say, I know you want me, to him in the locker room. The two boys had several verbal arguments that led McKinney to attempt to recruit other classmates to beat King up. No one was willing. At least six people heard McKinney making threats against King. On February 11th, McKinney told one of King's friends to say goodbye to him because she would never see him again. On the morning of February 12th, McKinney took a 22 revolver from one of his relatives and brought it to school with him. During class, when the students were supposed to be typing up essays in the school computer lab, the teacher and other students noticed McInerney kept looking up from his work to stare at King, who he was sitting behind. At about 8.15 a.m., McInerney stood up at his desk. He pulled the gun out of his bag and shot King in the back of the head twice. He then dropped the gun on the ground and walked out of the classroom. Police arrested him a few blocks away from the school less than 10 minutes later. King was taken to the hospital. After two days on life support, he passed away. Teachers expressed regret at missing the warning signs. One teacher stated, We failed Brandon. We didn't know the bullying was coming from the other side. Larry was pushing as hard as he could because he liked the attention. Gregory King, though obviously heartbroken, also felt sympathy for McInerney, who he was sure his son had been sexually harassing. Gregory was upset that his son was becoming a poster child for gay rights after a California assembly person proposed a diversity education bill in honor of King, and the 2008 Day of Silence for LGBT Rights was dedicated to him. King's parents blamed the school for not making him tone down his behavior. King's mother Dawn stated, I knew, gut instinct, that something serious was going to happen. They should have contained him, contained his behavior. Meanwhile, Brandon McInerney was in the juvenile detention center waiting for trial, where he would be tried as an adult, even though he was only 14 at the time of the shooting. His lawyers argued that he should not be tried as an adult, due both to his age and his upbringing in a volatile home. McInerney's mother was a meth addict with a criminal history, and his father had been to jail for assaulting his mother. At the time of the murder, McInerney was living with his father because his mother was in a drug treatment program. McInerney's trial was postponed several times, mostly at the request of his legal counsel. The trial finally began July 5, 2010, more than two years after King's death. McInerney pled not guilty to premeditated murder and a hate crime. During a break, McInerney's half-brother had approached jury members and told them 
The fate of my brother is in your hands. And Don King screamed and swore at a witness's daughter. Both were banned from the courtroom, but the trial still ended up being declared a mistrial. Instead of going through a second trial, in November 2011, McKinney pled guilty to second-degree murder, voluntary manslaughter, and use of a firearm. He was sentenced to 21 years with no credit for time served. That means he will have spent 25 years total in jail by the time he is released. My sources for this video were Newsweek, Southern California Public Radio, ABC News, Boston Globe, Ventura County Star, Wikipedia, and Murderpedia. If you would like to learn more, this case was featured in the 2013 HBO documentary Valentine Road and Ken Corbett's book A Murder Over a Girl. Raziel Reed's 2014 novel When Everything Feels Like the Movies was based on this case. McInerney himself has never made a statement about his motive for the shooting. Until he does, we have to make up our minds for ourselves. Tell me what you think. Was this a hate crime or was it provoked? And please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.